The Operation of the Safety Pole System Safety pole can be used as a single anchoring point or as a horizontal lifeline system during residential and commercial framing. As a horizontal lifeline system, the system can span a maximum of 60 feet and accommodate two workers per horizontal lifeline or four workers per span. You can tie off an additional worker to the back side of the end pole if needed. As a single anchoring point, the system can accommodate up to three workers. The system is ideal for protecting workers from exterior and open two-story interior falls and during the installation of higher exterior walls, plus when installing roof trusses and fascia. To install the safety pole system quickly and correctly, pre-planning is key. Knowing the best location to install the bases, having the correct tools and items on hand can save you important minutes on every job and even hours upon hours each week. We recommend that you have an action plan for the following. One, pre-planning on how and when the safety pole system is going to arrive at the job site, ensuring installers have the proper equipment on hand. Two, pre-planning the best location for the safety pole bases and shoe attachments. Three, pre-planning of system removal and transport to the next job site. Safety pole pre-installation process. Prior to installing the base, consider any post-tensioning cables and or plumbing in the concrete floor when locating the base by reviewing the approved building plans. It is recommended to install the system after the first story walls are plumb and lined and near the base locations. To avoid the system from interfering with trusses, refer to your floor and or roof truss layout to adjust base locations accordingly. Prior to installation, each of these system's components need to be inspected. Inspect all system components prior to installation for defects. Inspect the turnbuckle for damage. Ensure sufficient threads are engaged into the turnbuckle body. Look for any cracks or deformations in the metal. Inspect metal components for rust or corrosion that may affect their strength or operation. Inspect the cable for rust, corrosion, broken wires, or obvious faults. Inspect the HLL and side tensioning cables for proper tension. Inspect all hardware securing the HLL and tensioning cable assemblies to ensure they are present and properly installed. Inspect the HLL energy absorber for extension or deformities. There should be no tearing of the metal between the holes in the coiled section. Inspect securing hardware and the safety poles for strength and function. Inspect system labels. The labels must be present and fully legible. If inspection reveals an unsafe or defective condition, remove the unit from service. These items should be removed and returned to the manufacturer for repair, if possible. Upon inspecting the safety poles components, you are ready to begin installing the system. Tools needed for installation. Half inch by four inch Simpson Titan HD or Tapcon anchor bolts times four for each base. Impact drill with three quarter inch bit. Hammer drill with half inch concrete bit. Two inch by 20 foot truss strap with a shackle. Forklift with boom attachment or use of crane. Recommended 10 foot A-frame ladder. Safety pole installation, base. The base is installed with half inch by four inch concrete anchor bolts. Through the base screw ports, we need to drill a half inch in diameter by three and a half inches deep into the concrete foundation using an impact drill with a three quarter inch bit. Take the four half inch by four inch concrete anchor bolts and secure the base into the foundation with the impact drill. Repeat for each base being installed. 10 foot section, five foot section, T section, on the ground side, take the 10-foot section, the 5-foot section, and T-section, and by hand, slide each of the components together. It is recommended to slide each of the sections together near the base. Slide the 10-foot section, 5-foot section, and T-section together for each pole being installed. Take the 2-inch by 20-foot truss strap, Run the truss strap down the middle D ring of the T section through each corresponding D ring, shackling the 20 foot truss strap onto the lower D ring of the 10 foot section. Attach the side steadying cables to each pole prior to hoisting. 
We recommend that the pole be guided onto the base using two workers. Beware of pinching fingers. Begin hoisting each pole with either forklift boom attachment or crane. Repeat for each pole being installed. Tie backs, two by six shoes, pullers. Once the poles are erected, if you have not already, attach the side steadying cables and back steadying cables. Install the three side steadying cables on back opposite side from the HLL and two sides of each safety pole section. Attach the appropriate plate shoe for either 2x4 or 2x6 exterior wall sill plates that will provide a 45 degree angle from the pole or less. Make sure the shoes are securely attached to the sill plates. Attach the other end of the tie back cables to the plate shoes cable winch. String together tie back cables if more than one tie back cable is required to reach the plate shoe. Tighten the side steadying cable to provide steady tension by tightening the tensioning cable winch. Repeat this process for the remaining side steadying cables. Do not tighten the back steadying cable at this point. Install each horizontal lifeline's anchorage point on the pole. Double check the hollow bolt is extended one and three quarter inches. Remove the excess slack by pulling the wire rope through the cable grip. The jaw release bolt must be extended, as illustrated in Figure 9 of the Safety Pole User Instructional Manual, allowing the jaws to tighten around the wire rope, holding the wire rope tight. Tighten the wire rope until the sag at the system midspan is 6 inches or less, with no weight on the wire rope, by tightening the steadying cable on the back side of the safety poles. Adjust tension on pullers to ensure each pole is plumb.